Hi there. I'm certainly glad you could join me today. Uh, so today I'll be painting for you a beach scene. Um, it's actually going to just be water, a happy little sky, and a dock. Uh, so hopefully this will take about 27 minutes and I'll talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing as I go through. So right now the canvas is dry and I'm going to start by adding a thin coat of liquid white. So with the two inch brush, get a small amount of liquid white and just put it on the canvas any which way. We just want a nice thin, even covering. today I have titanium white, I have some phthalo green, phthalo blue, Van Dyke brown, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, and Indian yellow. And so for this scene I do want to start with a nice bright sky in the middle and I'll create a horizon line to separate the sky from the water. So let's start with um, another two inch brush and we'll start with some of that um, cadmium yellow. So pulling a little bit out and then tapping the brush into it just to get an even distribution on the bristles. And using some X strokes, crisscross strokes, start in the middle and pull it out to the sides and as you go it starts to mix with the liquid white and gets a little bit lighter as you go. So that's a pretty bright color and I'm gonna next go into a little bit of that Indian yellow. Once again pulling out just a little bit and tapping it in. And we'll just darken that up around the top and a little bit around the bottom. And going right into the alizarin crimson, pull a little bit out, beat it into the bristles to the top here and I kind of stayed away from the yellow a little bit. I wanted a nice thick amount of red, uh, kind of turns pink in the liquid white and then I'm going to pull it in and hopefully do a little mixing. Try to get this to turn a little bit orange but we don't want to lose the yellow so don't take away all the yellow. Lastly, we'll add some phthalo blue so the red acts as a separator so that our sky doesn't turn green. We don't want to mix blue and yellow. That will make it turn green. Mix a little in there. And I know that I do want the bottom to be blue and I'm going to add a little phthalo green to that. Give that a nice Caribbean peel. And we'll pull that in sideways. And we'll leave that little strip of white in the center just to give it that look of sunlight hitting it. All right, so I am going to wash the brush. Odorless paint thinner is your best friend. If you use non-odorless, you're going to run everybody out of the house and probably need to open the windows. Just beat the devil out of it. All right, so with a clean and dry brush, we can go back through and finish blending what we have going on in the sky and then down in the water. So clean, dry brush, just pull it across. Make sure you're not picking up too much color from the blue. Right. 
So next up, I do want to add some happy little clouds. And with that, I'm going to use a number six fan brush. And I might add a little bit of the liquid white um, to my palette here. Just gives us the ability to put some colors on without um, um, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So it helps to thin it out just a little bit. So pull it out, load the brush. If you want, you could add a little bit of the alizarin crimson to your white to give the clouds a little pink tint. Um, kind of might match the sky a little bit. So just a little bit. Don't want to set the clouds on fire here. So once you've loaded plenty of paint into the brush, um, we're going to go up here and just start adding in some clouds where, wherever you want. In a nice circular motion. And I can see that I'm starting to pick up some paint. So I'm going to wipe the brush off just a little, go back in, maybe add a little more of the liquid white. And again, continue going across. With these nice round motions. Maybe add one from up here. Come over to meet it. Alright. So with a clean, dry two inch brush. I'm going to go up here and use the corner, do some rounding of the clouds, staying away from the top piece of it. You want to keep that nice and nice and thick. And we'll just round those out a little bit with some circular motion. Circular fluffing. Okay. And very lightly, very lightly. Pull across. Two hairs and some air. Two hairs and some air. It's okay to get little wispies. All right. Well, I'm going to call my sky area done. And I do want some of this yellow to really be reflected into the water, so I think I am going to take um, and put a white line with my palette knife using the liquid white that I had added to the palette. Pull that out, cut off a little roll, and up here right in my yellow, put a nice white line straight across here. Make sure it's flat, otherwise it'll bother you later. So nice and straight, nice and flat. And act like you're cutting a hole in it, right through the canvas. If you don't like it or you put too much on it, just keep rubbing it. It'll go away for you. And I'm just going to add a few more kind of watery things in, nice and horizontally. You can add as much in as you need to make this look like a nice peaceful morning out on the docks. Oh, maybe not the docks, at a dock. We're going to put a dock in here. It's going to be more like a big lake. So I want to feel like I'm bringing this forward. Um, this is all water. The pink is the reflection of the sky. Okay. So this singular dock is going to start, um, maybe not all the way at the horizon. It just needs to be in the distance nice and small and then get big as it comes toward us. So one thing that you can do to try to make your um, paint stick better when you're applying a, a dock scene with your knife is to use your knife to like cut out and indicate where you want to put it. So I'm going to grab my smaller knife, I've got two sizes of knives here, it's my smaller size, and I'm going to decide where that dock is going to start, 
where it's going to come to as it comes toward me. Alright, that's where I'm going to put this, this dock. And I'm going to grab some Van Dyke Brown. Pick it up, put it back on the palette, lay it out nice and flat, and then cut a little roll. But we're going to need more on, on the knife than that. So it needs to be nice and thick. Nice and thick. If you need to, you can add a little paint thinner. Try to get this to stick. You can also go at it from a different angle. Add some things to this to make it look like here right off the corner there that's where I want that to be so the good news is there will be a reflection in the water so it's okay if it's not quite perfect along this edge we'll pull that down and make a reflection out of it so one thing I do want on my dock is to show that there are planks or things like that. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix a little of the Van Dyke Brown with it. Again, picking up the paint, flattening it out. Go through and just lay it on there. Help it look like planks. If we want even more separation, we can go through and A little bit of the white. You can even cut through it if that works for you. And of course the dot can't just be standing on its own. We do need to add some, uh, some posts to hold it up. Let's keep those nice and vertical. In the water there. Okay. And I think one thing that we need to add, maybe with a small brush, a one inch brush, um, is just to maybe pull this down just a little. Two hairs and some air. Two hairs and some air. To give it that watery look. You can even pull it sideways. To make it look like it really is in the water. Because again, there's no beach here. This is all, all water. And the last thing I'd like to add to this would be a little bit of wildlife. At this lake, I think there should be some birds in the air. So for that, you can certainly use uh, some brown and maybe some blue mixed together. If you have black, you can use that. Um, alizarin crimson and um, green will also make a nice dark color, phthalo green. Make a nice dark color in even quantities. Make a nice dark color. Add a little Van Dyke Brown. Help keep that nice and dark. And I'll add a little paint thinner to that. Make that nice and thin, just like water. Nice and thin. Roll the brush in it. Make it to a nice sharp end. And just make some some M shapes, some birds up there. Make the M shape as sharp as you want. I'm going to call that painting finished. 